So this morning, I get the privilege to preach a kids' sermon, and I love that. I think this is a wonderful thing that we do. And I've kind of done it up because we started a sermon series, Just Be. And in that, we talked about being still, and then we talked about being filled. And this one is about being ready. So guys and gals, I see you. You're not too far away. Do you guys ever have anything you have to be ready for? Is there ever anything you have to be ready for or ready to do? <laughs> what, Elijah? Life. Oh, what? That's a very good choice. <laughs> Life. That's not what I was expecting, but a good answer. Anything else you need to be ready for? Yes, Joel. When Jesus comes, that's a great answer. Anything else we have to be ready for? You guys have to be ready for school tomorrow morning? No, you don't need to. <laughs> <laughs> I think everybody heard that. You don't need to. Elijah, do you have to be ready for school tomorrow? Yeah, you kind of do. What about for church on Sunday morning? Do you need to be ready for that? Oh, yes. That's important, isn't it? There are some other things you need to be ready for. How many of you like to go places? This is for everybody. How many of you like to go places? Okay, well, not everybody, but a few of you. Okay, fair enough. So if I told you that we're going to Florida after service, would you guys be ready to go? Yes. Yes, no? I heard a couple of yeses. Look, I got a bad attack almost all the time, ready to go. Because <laughs> I love to go. Okay, I had a couple of yeses. You said yes, right, Joel? And a few out here. Okay, so if I asked you, are you ready to go to the back of the church and take the garbage out? Are you ready to do that right now? Yes. Yes. Oh, that's awesome. Would, that, would everybody just be ready to do that right now in this moment? Be honest with me. Some of you are yeses and some of you are no. Some of you want to get out because you're not quite sure what I'm going to preach this morning. Maybe. Some things are easier to be ready for than others. For some people, a big trip, they can be ready today and be out on the road. For other people, they want time to plan and prepare, right? Is that fair? Yeah. Some of us are planners and some of us are sporadic, fly by the seat of your pants kind of people. <laughs> but today, I want to read you guys a story about a young boy who was ready. There's an account in the Bible about a young boy who was ready to do what he was asked to do, when he was asked to do it. And he was listening to God. So when God spoke, he was ready to do what God asked him to do. Now this young boy, you might be able to figure it out if I tell you a little bit about him. This young boy took care of his father's sheep, out in the sheepfold. And he was ready to go when his father asked him to go and do something. Who do you think it is, Joel? David. You would be right. And this morning I'm going to read from the contemporary English version, and it's done up as a children's daily devotional. So for those of you who know your scriptures, you're going to realize this is not the whole story. That's okay. It's the way it's intended to be. <laughs> so here we go. The Philistines got ready for war and brought their troops together to attack the town of Soko in Judah. They set up camp at Ephes Damon in Soko and Ethica. The Philistine army had a hero named Goliath. That's right who was from the town of Gath, and he was over nine feet tall. So I'm five foot seven and a half, so I cannot reach nine feet, okay? So he's a lot taller than I am. This is the giant Goliath. David was Jesse's youngest son. He took care of his father's sheep, and he went back and forth between Bethlehem and Saul's camp. One day, Jesse told David, hurry and take this bag of roasted grain and these ten loaves of bread for your brothers at the army camp. When the Israelite soldiers saw Goliath, they were scared and ran off. David asked some soldiers standing nearby, what will a man get for killing this Philistine and stopping him from insulting our people? Who does this worthless Philistine think he is? He's making fun of the army of the living God. Yeah. So remember, Goliath is his nine-foot giant, and David is his young boy, maybe like one of you guys, okay? So, and David's just a little upset about this. So, 
Where was I? When Goliath, oh, sorry, some soldiers overheard David talking. So they told Saul what David had said, and Saul was the king. Saul sent for David, and David came. Your majesty, he said, this Philistine should turn us into cowards. I'll go out and fight him myself. When Goliath saw that David was just a healthy, good-looking boy, he made fun of him. Do you think I'm a dog, Goliath asked. And this is why David answered him. He said, you come out to fight me with a sword and a spear and a dagger. But I've come to fight you in the name of the Lord, all-powerful. He is the God of Israel's army, and you have insulted him too. Today, the Lord will help me defeat you. I'll knock you down and cut off your head, and I'll feed the bodies of the other Philistine soldiers to the birds and wild animals. Then, the whole world will know that Israel has a real God. Everybody here will see that the Lord doesn't need swords or spears to save his people. The Lord always wins his battles, and he will help us defeat you. When Goliath started forward, David ran toward him. He put a rock in his sling, and he swung the sling around by its straps. When he let go of one strap, the rock flew out and hit Goliath on the forehead. It cracked his skull, and he fell face down on the ground. David was ready. That must have hurt. That's right. <laughs> David was ready when his father asked him to take the loaves and the grain to his brothers in the battlefield. And he heard what Goliath was saying. What this doesn't tell you is that Goliath was coming out and he was threatening the army of God, the army of Israel, and he was threatening them and calling them names. And the Israelites were so afraid because this giant, giant, gigantic man was coming out and, and casting these threats. But David heard this. David did not go there on his own, did he? We heard from the story that he knew he couldn't do it on his own, but he knew that the Lord could help him defeat Goliath because God does not lie. And he said that he would protect his people. And David knew this. Because David had been spending time with God in prayer, he knew who God was. He spent time with him, and he was still. And he allowed God to fill him. Through this prayer and listening to him, David was ready to face whatever came his way. All of it. Now remember, David was a boy. So he was probably maybe about this tall. Stand up, Elijah. So Elijah, we'll say Elijah's David. And this big hulk of a man probably is tall. I don't know how high the ceilings are in here, but probably about nine feet, maybe a little higher. Um, this great big man's coming at you, and you have the confidence of God in you, right? You do, don't you? And measure. <laughs> sure. <laughs> That's awesome. Have a seat. But they, well, we don't know. <laughs> But David was ready because he listened, because he knew who God was. So have you guys spent time with God and listened to him? Are you hearing from him? Are you ready? Yes? I'm glad to hear that, because if you are, that's a wonderful thing, and continue to do that. But if you're not, if you haven't been listening to God, and you haven't been spending time with him, do you know that you can do that? It's as simple as sitting down and taking time and praying. Talking to God just like you talk to your parents or your friends. It's nothing fancy. It's simple. We just need to talk to God the same way that we talk to anyone else. And then, in a conversation, what else do we have to do? Well, there's words. We talk, and then we listen. We have to learn to listen. Is that an easy thing to do? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Joan, is that an easy thing for you to do all the time? Well, yes, but I don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Yes, but I don't do it. What's his answer? <laughs> I want to say, too, sometimes we can pray and we can talk to God and we can ask him and we can listen and we don't hear anything. 
and we listen some more, and we still don't hear anything. But I want to tell you, it's okay. Because we still, we continue to listen. We continue to talk, and we continue to listen, and eventually God is going to speak to us, and he's going to talk to us. So be patient with that, okay? So church, in what I've said, are we ready? Are you guys ready this morning? Are you ready to hear from God? Are you taking time to be still in his presence? Not just to talk, but also to listen. Are we taking time to be filled with his presence so that when he does speak, that we are ready to move? That it's not about just sitting and listening. So we've been looking at the story of Elijah over the last couple of weeks. And over that time, we've seen Elijah, um, I, I shared with you that he defeated the prophets of Baal and that he was feeling very defeated when the queen said, I'm killing you by tonight. Like, you are done for, dude. And it was going to be over for him. In that moment, he was so exhausted that he ran away. He just ran away because he had nothing left. Physically, spiritually, or emotionally, he was spent. He went to the mountain of God. He spent 40 days and 40 nights. He went to the mountain of God, and in that he experienced God. First, a wind came. A strong wind came and tore things apart, but God wasn't in the wind. Then an earthquake came and a fire came, but God wasn't in those. We sometimes look for these great, big, huge things for God to speak to us, but when God spoke to Elijah, he spoke in a still small voice. And Elijah had to have his heart and his ears turned to God to hear him. He had to be listening and have his heart in that place. Elijah then poured out his heart to God and, and told him all the things that were wrong and all the stuff that had gone wrong and all the fears that he had. He poured all of that out. That allowed him to be empty before God. God spoke to him and filled him and then gave his, him his assignment. It was time for Elijah to move. We're going to go to the scripture. We're going to finish out chapter 19 of 1 Kings. And we're going to see what his assignment was. So 1 Kings chapter 19, starting at verse 15. And the Lord said to him, Go, return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus. And when you arrive, you shall anoint Hezael to be king over Syria. And Jehu, the son of Nimshi, you shall anoint to be king over Israel. And Elisha, the son of Shaphat, of Abel Meloah, you shall anoint to be prophet in your place. And the one who escapes from the sword of Hazael shall Jehu put to death. And the one who escapes from the sword of Jehu shall Elisha put to death. Yet, I will leave 7,000 in Israel, all the knees that have not bowed to Baal, and every mouth that has not kissed him. Earlier in this chapter, Elijah asked God to take his life. He was so desperate, he was so worn out, he was so frustrated that he just wanted God to take his life and be done with it. But God, in his mercy, refreshed Elijah and filled him and prepared him because Elijah's job was not done. His work for God was not yet finished. So I just have a question. Do any of you feel like it's enough? Are any of you feeling like Elijah was feeling? It's just it's over. It's done. Just, Lord, take me now. Just let's be done with it. If you are, I want to encourage you today. Because just as God refreshed Elijah, he can refresh you. But will you take time to be still? Will you go to him? God did that for Elijah, and he will do it for you as well. God gave Elijah very clear directions. There were three things he was to do. And I'm just going to tell you now, you'll only find that he did one. The other things were done through his ministry, but not by him personally, but he did one of them. So now that we're done with that, Elijah had clear directions. He knew who, and he knew where, and he knew what he was to do. God sent him away from this quiet, sacred space that he had spent so much time in. We know that he wandered in the desert for 40 days and 40 nights. We don't know how many days he was on the mountain. For sure, but there was a span of time that he was in that quiet, sacred space, and now he was to go out. And I don't know about you, 
But are you ever comfortable in your sacred space? Yeah. Yeah. Do you guys ever get comfortable in just being? Because that can be a very comfortable place. And being filled can be a, an extremely comfortable place for us. And I'll be honest with you, I like being still and being filled. There's nothing like my favorite pair of leggings, an oversized sweater, and my blanket, and my journal, and my pen, and my quiet little corner in my chair. I love that. That is my favorite place to be. But God doesn't call us just to stay in that. That is, that is our preparation space. And then, when he calls us to move out of it, sometimes we're not quite ready. But the question is, are we ready? Inside the church, there's all kinds of ministries that we need to be doing, that we're already doing. If you aren't aware, let me name a few. There's a children's ministry, and we have some children with us today. Without children's workers, we can't have a children's ministry. We have youth sprinkled throughout the room, and we have a youth ministry. But without youth workers, we cannot have a youth ministry. There's a prayer ministry. Without us connecting to God in prayer, whether we do it as a group or whether we do it alone, whether we do it in, in our living rooms with two or three people or 25 or if we open the church and we have 50 or 70 or 100 people come, they all matter. Prayer ministry is so important to the church because God moves when we pray. Not because he has to, but because he's faithful and he loves us. And he wants us to pray. He wants us to take time and spend with him. There's the social use, uh, social ministry. Uh, we get together, we have potlucks, we do things together, game nights and things like that. That is all part of ministry. We have sound and tech and music ministry in the church. We have preaching ministry. We have outreach ministries, alpha and such things that we do to get out into the community. Those are just a few. That's a snapshot of ministries that we have. Outside of the church, there's all kinds of ministries. There's the 100 Meals Ministry that the mayor in Yarmouth started to make sure that people could get a hot meal every day for 100 days between January and March. They're always in need of helpers. That's a huge ministry. There is the, um, the community kitchen that we take part in once every six weeks or something like that. There's that ministry. There's the nursing home ministry that we go and we share the word and we spend time with the people. We pray with them and just love them for a time. There's shift house. There's all kinds of ministries. The jail ministry. I just looked back and saw Harriet and uh, saw Harriet in the jail ministry and how many how many people get involved in ministries outside of the church. There's the school that always needs people. And I want to tell you, the things that sometimes you think can't be a ministry can be. Because if you're taking Jesus with you, you are doing ministry. Because it's not about us, it's about him and what he wants. God is already at work in our world. We want to be ready to be on mission with him. Not on our own mission for him, but on his mission. Because he has a plan and he has a purpose. And there's something that he wants to do. He is passionate about his people. Shouldn't we be passionate about his people? And his people look around. We're all his people. Step out the doors, they're all his people. God's people are all of us. There is none that is not. As we take time to be still and be filled and be ready, he is going to lead and guide us in the details of the who and the when and the where and the how. Like who go from the Grinch, yeah. <laughs> He's going to share those with us. He may not give us all the details, and you know what? We don't need to know them all. And I'm going to tell you something else. He may not let you in at all on the why. And that's okay because he's the head. He is God, and he sees it all, and he knows. He knows the heart. He understands what everybody's about, and he puts things together perfectly. Will you join him? David knew God's heart, didn't he? David knew God's heart, and he learned to be obedient because he spent time with him. And he trusted him. 
He defeated Goliath not because of his strength and might, but because he knew whose strength and might could defeat Goliath. He trusted God. Elijah had many victories. If you go back in 1 Kings and read through some of that, you're going to see that he raised the boy from the dead. He prophesied a drought that would not give up and would not stop until he prayed to release it. He provided flour and oil for a widow, woman, and her son and promised that it wouldn't run out until the drought was over and it happened. He called down fire from heaven to defeat the prophets of Baal, which didn't just burn up the sacrifice, but it burned up the rocks and all of the water that was part of that. Elijah knew what God was capable of. No question. He knew what he was capable of, but he forgot to be still and to be filled so he could be ready. But when he did this, he heard God's still small voice and he understood what he needed to do and he knew that God was going to be there so he was obedient to it. There is a time to be still and there's a time to be filled and there's a time to be ready. So as a church, we have a mission to connect, grow, and go. And there's a reason for that. The reason is, is because we exist to introduce people to Jesus and help them grow in their faith. That is the reason why we connect, grow, and go. And this finds us in step with God's mission. Because before Jesus left this earth, he gave his disciples, which means all of us who follow him, something to do. And that is to go and teach and make disciples of all the nations. So we start where we are. God calls us all to do it. And he may call you to do something that you're not ready for or you feel you're not ready for. But I'm, I'm praying that you will trust him in this. Are we ready, church? Are we ready to connect with new people, even though it might mean some things that we're not sure of? Are we ready to grow in our faith and our knowledge so that we can help other people grow in their faith and their knowledge? Are we ready to go out of this church beyond the comfort of our sacred space and do the things that he is calling us to do? Are you ready to shine your light for Jesus wherever he puts you? Because you're already, you're in a family, you may have a job, you may go to school, you already have a connection of people. Are you shining your light for Jesus among them? Are you ready? Are you ready? I'm going to call the worship team back, and I want to pray for us. Because I think it's so important that we learn these three things. If we are not still, we are not going to hear from God. If we trust him, he is going to fill us and prepare us for what he's calling us to do. And then when he does, we will be ready. Let's pray. Heavenly and gracious Father, God, we thank you that you are sovereign, that you know our hearts. Lord, that your heart is good for all people. And Lord, I pray as we look to you, that you would help us to hear your voice, and maybe there's a ministry that hasn't begun that you are calling someone to. Lord, I pray that you would make that clear to them. That you would give them everything that they need to fulfill that ministry and to do it. But not to do it on their own strength. But as David did, to trust you and look to you for your strength and your might. God, we praise you and thank you for everyone who is here today. For every family who isn't here who normally comes, Lord, we pray that you would speak to their hearts in the quiet today sometime. Lord, would you prepare us to be ready as a church and as individuals to be obedient to the call that you have on each of us. Lord, we give you praise and thanks for all that you're going to do in your name. Amen.